Um, good king, bad king, does this make any difference really? to how we view him. I think what Dan said earlier is right. It, it doesn't actually make that much difference. I mean, we thought, we think at first it might do because, of course, Richard has this reputation from Sir Thomas More, from yeah. Shakespeare, from Churchill as being a crooked man with a crooked back. And so there's been some sort of connection between his physical deformities and his monstrous character. But, of course, we're beyond that now. We've discovered that he did have a curved spine. But so that the doesn't Tudors weren't mean just doing him down? They weren't just doing him down. I think the, the slightly surprising thing that's come out today is that the Tudor propaganda wasn't just an invention. There was something in it. An exciting day or, or overplayed the arrival of Richard III in the scene again? It's, it's an exciting day for the University of Leicester and for the car park attendants. <laughs> but I would have been much more excited if they'd exhumed another draft of, of Shakespeare's play. I, th I think the reason we're having this conversation at all is because Shakespeare's yeah. done Richard III a huge favour. I mean, it, it, this is terribly bad news for the Richard III society because they've uh, said he's a man who is absolutely blameless and, and uh, what's more, that he had a perfectly straight spine. So I, I think this, this, uh, this revelation actually does at, at least allow Shakespeare the, um, something more than mere poetic license. But when you uh, directed Richard III, how did you, you directed Ian McKellen? I did. So how, how, what was your, what, what were your lines, as it were, on how to play Shakespeare's Richard III? You know, do you think there's a lot of uh, fun in it? As, well, there uh, is a lot of, of, of fun. Of, of course, he's, he's a soldier. His first speech is telling you how terrible it is for him that peace has broken out and, and grim-visaged wars uh, ha, has, has vanished, to be re replaced by uh, all the, the effeminacy of, of, of peace. Um, he tells you he's going to do terrible things. You see him do terrible mm -hmm. things. And he does. It's interesting watching Chris Hune today um, saying, I'm totally innocent, which is, of course, what Richard III does. In the first scene with Lady Anne, he convinces her that he's a, an absolutely uncorrupted and uncorruptible. Unblemished. He then turns to the audience, having seduced her, having convinced her of his innocence, and says, was ever woman in this humour wooed? Was ever woman in this humour mm. won? I mean, he, he, he's an utterly beguiling villain. But I, I think often the, the people who are the great defenders of Richard III produce the play because the play is actually an extraordinarily complex mm. play about politics, and it's a, it's a handbook for tyranny. And, but he was a, a complex man because you know, we now know that there were certain enlightened aspects of things, you know, the first man to give bail and so forth. But he, di he died a horrific death, didn't he? A humiliating death. And I suppose Henry VII really had to, had to humiliate him, had to establish himself without doubt, had to make sure he was dead. Yes, I mean, he was the last king, as we've heard, to die on the battlefield mm. in England. Um, he, qu quite fairly, uh, in some ways, Henry the Tudor, I, I, I will upset lots of Ricardians, but Henry Tudor won. Um, and, and I suppose the problem for that is that Richard III always had this reputation as a great warrior. Mm. What we've discovered is that he was probably attacked from behind. And had humiliating wounds. And then humiliating wounds. But that was necessary to demonstrate that he was dead. He, he was mm. carried through Leicester in order to, to say he hasn't gone into hiding. He actually is dead and Henry Tudor is now Henry VII. He's king. So it, that had to be the way it worked out. And, um, you know, now the big debate will be where will his uh, bones be interred? I mean, there is talk of Westminster Abbey. The Queen would have to give her say-so. But where should he be buried? Certainly not in Leicester, one assumes. Leicester would be the place of his defeat, so it would be a curious place to choose to put him. Uh, I mean, kings have been buried in all sorts of places, Canterbury and um, Reading and Gloucester, not necessarily Westminster mm. Abbey. I suppose it, it might be wise to consider putting him somewhere where he knew success, um, somewhere like Richmond, maybe York, but perhaps not Leicester. But I'm sure the University of Leicester would be very, very sad if he went elsewhere now. Now, of course, we're going to have a not that we never, we've always got Richard III on somewhere, but um, what are the best lines? And I mean, you, you would have to say that you directed Richard uh, Ian McKellen, so he was the best actor, but in terms of, tr of actors that you've seen play it and the best lines, what would you say the Richard III best lines are? Um, I, I, my favourite line is when um, Elizabeth says to the old Queen Margaret, um, I'll, I'll misquote the line, but it's teach me how to curse my enemies. 
and this is the, 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 the unrevealed part of the play, is that it has some of the most powerful parts for women in the whole of the Shakespearean yeah. canon. And far from being a sort of glorification and, and reveling in, in the uh, a, a sort of godfather-like reveling in the, the villainy and the viciousness, mm. it shows you the consequences of it. And the most devastating scene is a scene with three women who have all lost second, the second relatives. Half, yeah. Fantastic. What about you? What's your favourite bit, Richard III? Or, or as a Tudor, you don't have any bits? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I suppose I, I, everybody's struck by the opening. You can't... Yeah. You, nobody can sort of walk away from that play and forget that dramatic opening. So I, I, I'd have to go with the, with the classic lines about the winter of our discontent. Thank you both very much.